It's Tuesday, and for today's Tactical Tuesday, let's go over playstyles and how to figure out yours. In all games, every player has a sense of style to them, and in this video, I'm going to go over the basics. And to determine your playstyle, some of this can stem from your personality. In all of my time playing card games from Yu-Gi-Oh!, Magic the Gathering, Hearthstone, and Digimon, there are a wide variety of factors that can determine what deck you play. The first item I'm going to go over is Archetype. Rather than choose your playstyle, you choose an archetype mainly because it has your favorite character or creature archetype in it. For example, any card game I play, I will typically be drawn to dragons, even if the archetype is bad. For Yu-Gi-Oh, I was a huge fan of Red Eyes and Disaster Dragon, and in Magic the Gathering, I gravitated towards Kalia for my commander. Digimon was no different in that I loved and played Tribal Greymon when it was more viable. While you may not fully comprehend your own playstyle, choosing your favorite Digimon can also focus you more to that Digimon's sense of play. For Tribal Greymon, for example, you'd be looking at a more aggressive style. Outside of playing your favorite characters, there are four major strategies when it comes to playstyle. Number one, aggro, which is short for the aggressive playstyle. Aggro decks tend to try and reduce your opponent's security to zero as quickly as possible, and typically do not have a long-term game plan. These types of decks will typically try to have a 5 to 10 minute game, which can result easily in 15 to 25 minute matches. Example decks in the BT6 format would be Agu Bond and Gabu Bond. Their entire purpose is to find their tamers while popping smaller bodies out to chip at security for big plays when they go into their bonds. Tendencies I have observed with individuals who play aggro decks are those who lack patience and tend to want the round to be over quickly. Which I can't blame them if they want to get food in between rounds. Number 2. Control. Control decks tend to go for the long game and play a lot of cards that slow the game down. Control decks are aggro decks' worst nightmare, because if they don't have the answers to control decks, i.e. a delicate plan, then control decks tend to have the advantage. Control may not be having a lot of Digimon in their decks, but a lot of option cards for disrupting your opponent by deleting their Digiball Digimon or board wiping them. In the Digimon trading card game, control tends to take game one and win by taking game two to time and also win by typically decking your opponent out. Example decks for control are Security Control and Three Musketeers, who have many option cards that can really mess with your opponent's board presence. Tendencies I have observed with individuals who play control style tend to be calculating, and in some instances, sadistic. Though not all control players are sadistic, except you magic blue counter boys out there. Moving to number three, we have combo decks. Combo decks tend to create an interaction of cards that create a very powerful combination that wins the game. Unlike Yu-Gi-Oh, which has FTKs, or first turn kills, Digimon does have OTK potential, but only when the correct cards are set up. Example decks are Lilith Loop and Jessmon. With either of these decks, it is possible to create a combination of cards that can end the game in one turn. Partially with Lilithmon having Ginkakumon promotes in the trash, Zwart and Mega Digimon fusion with a white source out, and Jessmon with Xavier Huckmon, Taikamiya, a delicate plan, and Blitz Omni. Tendencies I have observed with individuals who play combo based decks tend to like interaction, puzzles, and in general, seeing it all come together. Finally, mid range typically focuses on early control and builds up more aggressive threats at the end. From reading other articles online, it comes across as a hybrid strategy being able to go bigger than some aggro decks or getting under control. Based on definition, the example deck I have here is multicolor decks that incorporate Eos Mon, which for me is Eos Agubond. Although black probably fits into the description as well. Being able to set up early blockers and then making blockers undeletable late game with Cranium on. Tendencies I've observed with individuals who play mid-range typically think a lot and have multiple strategies rather than leaning completely aggro or control and are not reliant on combo pieces. And while you may see four primary strategies, there are hybrid strategies that let you play aggro control, control aggro, control combo, and so forth. 
In playing the Digimon trading card game, there are many styles of play. And while you may or may not have figured out your playstyle, I've gone over the basic playstyles that should give you some idea where to start. Are you someone who plays decks based on your playstyle? Or because the deck has your favorite Digimon? Let me know in the comments below. This is Digipanda. Logging out.